Hey y'all, welcome back. So today we have a mashed potato recipe for y'all. We're going to show you how I make mashed potatoes and then how we're going to change it to make it a little bit more fancy or bougie for Thanksgiving. Um, which you can do this anytime you like, but um, this is just some way to change it from normal regular mashed potatoes to something with a little bit more flair. So I've peeled some regular russet potatoes. I don't mind some of the skin on it, so I don't worry about getting them perfectly peeled, but I do want them in small chunks. I'm going to cook them in the pressure cooker tonight. You can do this on the stove, but it speeds up time, and once they get up to temperature, it only takes about five minutes to, um, to cook. So I have about a cup of warm water in the bottom of the pan. It can be cold. Just you need at least a, one cup, otherwise you're going to end up burning the bottom of your pan and your food. Some pressure cookers have a burn notice on them. I'm not sure if mine does or not. I've never gotten the notice, but I hear other people say that their Instapot and things um, let them know if they need to add more water with the burn notice. Mine probably... I think I've had it one time tell me not enough water in it to bring up to pressure, but never a burn notice. So I'm just dicing up all of my potatoes. I usually say, think about how many people you're trying to feed to figure out how many potatoes you need to um, cut up. So I usually cut up one medium sized potato for each person. Now, if you have children, um, that like potatoes, consider them in the adult ratio of it. If you have somebody that loves potatoes, maybe do an extra. It's always better to have a little bit more than need more. Um, so I try to pick a medium sized potato per person for how many I'm making. And like I said, if you have a little extra, that's better than not having enough. And potatoes can freeze if you end up having too much. You can always put them in um, a freezer bag and store them for later and then just thaw them. And you'll have mashed potatoes ready to go. Remember, the smaller you cut your potatoes, the faster they're going to cook. And you can cook this on the stove top as well. Um, I'm just using my pressure cooker because I like to, and I can get some things done while this is going. I don't have to stir or make sure anything boils over. Told you I like using my Ninja Foodie. I think just threw a potato. Now usually if I'm making mashed potatoes for roast, I'll just use butter, and this is, might sound a little strange, but I tell you, it's one of the best things I love about my mashed potatoes for roast is a um, container of French onion soup, the dip mix. Not the packets, anything like that. It's the mix that you would get for chips in the refrigerated section. Instead of sour cream, use that, and it gives it the perfect tang to balance the really rich um, roast. So that's kind of the same um, direction I'm going for these potatoes, but we're not using that today. You could use that also for if you want to fancy up your, uh, your Thanksgiving mashed potatoes. I put warm water in my pan whenever I do it because I feel like it makes it come to pressure and temperature a lot faster. With it sitting open like this, that might not do any anything. It might take just as long. 
but I feel like it does. You could also toss in a little salt if you want. Um, I don't just because we're going to be adding some salt with our cheese spread that we're putting in here. Last potato. behind me. I'm just going to put on our lid and make sure it's sealing. Turn it on. Get pressure high. We're going to go down to five minutes. It's going to take a few minutes to build up to pressure and then once it does it'll turn itself off and we'll be back. Alright, so the mashed potatoes are all finished. They've just clipped off, so we're going to do a quick release and let all of the steam out. In the great outdoors, forever free. That took a minute. So, I'm just gonna test our potatoes and make sure they're nice and soft, and they are. So, I'm gonna drain some of the water off into the sink. We wanna keep a little bit of the potato water because it adds that starchiness to it. And we don't want our potatoes to be dry. But they're all cooked and softened. So we're just gonna pour it right over the pan that I washed them in earlier just in case some pour out, it will catch them. And only a few fell out. So the way we're gonna make this a little bit bougier extra is we're just gonna mash them up. And I like a chunky mash. I don't like pure, completely pureed. You can puree if you like, and even mashing like this, you're gonna get a really soft puree. But I don't use a blender or things like that. I feel like it makes them too gummy. But just mash them up and just a few mashes and that's already done. But for the amount of potatoes that we used, this is our secret ingredient for to make them a little bit more bougie. I have no idea how to say this cheese name. Borsen, Borsen, I'm not sure. But the garlic and fine herb is really good. We bought this in a three pack from um, Costco, and I'm gonna use two just because of the size, the amount of potatoes that I bought or I cooked. You can, especially if you buy this pack, um, they have them individual as well, but if you buy this large pack from Costco, you could toss one in here and then use one for like a charcuterie board or something, so you have that extra. There's another one that comes in this pack also that's got, um, I think, chives and something else. So you could use that as well if you like. But we're just gonna kind of break that up. And let's add a little bit of butter as well. And remember, we left some of that potato water in to act as a liquid, but we're just going to mix this all around. We don't want to over mix it and end up making it gummy. But just really good. Melt it around. Now that cheese melts super quick also. So you don't have to do a lot of work. Just make sure it's well mixed. Fancy 
greasy potatoes. Now, we're going to take it a little bit further and pour it into a little pan. Put some butter on top, a little bit of salt and pepper, some extra parsley, and show you how we'd bake it the day of Thanksgiving or for any of your parties. So you can make this the night before and spoon it into your pan. And you see those chunks of cheesy butteriness in there? Very easy, but it's a good twist on just a regular mashed potato. making some little pockets. So we're gonna put some extra little dollops of butter so that whenever this goes in the oven to toast, those little dollops of butter will just turn into golden brown bits. And they'll just melt and kind of pull right in those little pockets. I'm going to put a little bit of salt and pepper. And this is going to go in the oven. Again, this, if you're making it the day before, just wrap it at this point. And, um, or you can even leave off the butter for this part but wrap it in some aluminum foil when it comes time to reheat it the next day. Pop it in the oven just to warm it up and then you can drop in your dollops of butter. Right at the very end, pop it under the boiler to get that golden brown color on the top and it really makes it so much better. So just a minute, we're gonna pop it in the oven and we'll see y'all in about five minutes. The potatoes are out of the oven. It just took about three to four minutes under the broiler to get this nice pretty brown color. The butter's all melted and soaked in. And last thing we're gonna do is just tear up some parsley to go on top. Again, just making our bougie a little bit more fancy. And we eat with our eyes first. You always want to make sure you're making it look pretty. Now this parsley will burn if you put it under the broiler, so don't do that. I think I let my parsley sit too close to the pan. It got kind of heat wilted. But just tear it up. And pull out your big sticks, because those aren't so pretty looking. And there you have it. Your regular mashed potatoes made a little bit more bougie and fancy for Thanksgiving or whatever event you have to take them to. Hopefully y'all enjoy. We'll see y'all later.